Hello and welcome to the Fitting in Fitness interview series. I'm your host, Catherine Basu, and if you're a busy woman who is looking for a more compelling reason to stick to her fitness routine than just to look cute in her skinny jeans, you are in the right place. During this series, I'm talking to some really amazing rock star women who currently fit fitness into their routines, even though they're also very busy as well, and actually cite it as one of the secrets to their success. They're gonna tell you how they got started with their fitness routines, how they currently fit fitness into their own schedules, and what you can do to start fitting fitness into your own life and start seeing changes today. So I'm so excited that you're tuning in and joining us. Today's guest is Rebecca Tracy from The Uncaged Life, and I'm gonna read you a little bit more about her first. So Rebecca Tracy is the head slash only honcho at The Uncaged Life, where she works with clients from all over the world who want to have the freedom of working from anywhere by running their own online business. She helps people figure out what the hell they're doing in their businesses, which is very important, <laughs> create packages that sell, and helps them actually take action on the things they want to do. Rebecca runs an online community of over 2,500 solopreneurs. She started her business while living in a van, loves rock climbing and riding her bike around Toronto, and is genuinely obsessed with helping people live their version of Uncaged. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Rebecca. Oh, thank you for having me. So excited to have you here. So love your little bio there, and um, I've, I've been following you online. I've, I've seen you in, in your group even. So I know a little bit about you know, what a day in the life looks like maybe some days, but would love for you to share that with the audience. Like what does a day in the life of Rebecca Tracy look like? <laughs> oh my God. Um, it depends on where I am in the world. So <laughs> um, when I'm at, so when I'm at home in Toronto, which is where I live, which is where I live, I was mm -hmm. going to say where I live mostly, but I live here. I've been here. <laughs> so this is my home. Um, it's pretty boring. Like nothing that exciting happens. So I like get up in the morning, I make some tea, I sit down at my computer, I get to work. Um, we'll t I'm sure we'll talk more about what my fitness routine looks like, yeah. but there's usually like a yoga class or a climbing day scheduled in there. Um, so I'm pretty low key when I'm at home, um, which most people find really interesting. I don't go out a lot, um, <laughs> but I travel a lot too. So the days when I'm traveling are obviously very, very different. I just got back from Guatemala yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually, you know, what's funny. I say it's very different. It wasn't that different. I was there with two other entrepreneurs and we rented a house and we literally just got up in the morning, had breakfast, sat in cafes all day, did our work, walked around for a bit, had lunch, sat back down, did our work. So <laughs> it's a lot of computer time. Sure. Um, yeah, but then there's also there's also days and months where I'm away traveling where I've not scheduled any work at all, where I'm able to just completely, um, move, like completely forget about my business for a little yeah. bit and uh, and just enjoy like playing outside and being away. So my schedule varies depending on where I am. <laughs> Very cool. I'm sure, well, at least the weather will change too, right? When you're <laughs> versus Toronto versus yeah. Guatemala. Yeah. And that's actually, that's true. Yeah. So I tend to also have, I work in like cycles. So when it's winter time, which it is here and it's freezing and terrible outside, um, I work a lot. Like I really hustle. Mm. As soon as spring comes, it's rock climbing time. So I don't want to work spring, summer, fall. Like I work, I take clients, yeah. I do the bare minimum, but I'm not creating anything new. I'm not like hustling my marketing or anything like that. I'm really just enjoying, enjoying living, which I think is kind of the point of my business. Yeah, in the first sure. Definitely. Very cool. So yeah. we, yeah, you said you're going to talk about this more because I was going to ask you about it more, but <laughs> yeah. Um, so how do you fit fitness into that routine? You know, since it is going to vary from like one, you know, where you're traveling one place to the next and also season to season, how do you fit fitness into those busy days? Yeah. Well, when I'm, it's definitely much different now than when I started my business. Mm. Um, so now it's, not negotiable. So it's in my schedule. Um, my yoga classes are scheduled in. Um, I don't always go to the same ones each week, but I have them literally set in my schedule and blocked out on my calendar. So clients can't book in at times when my yeah. yoga classes are at. Um, same with, I just started doing spin classes and actually going what? to like a gym gym. Um, <laughs> so those are scheduled in weekly. And then I have certain days of the week that I go climbing in the evenings. And I would love to say I always stick to the schedule. I definitely don't. But having it scheduled in there and knowing that there's no way that clients can book and leaving myself enough time before and after, um, like to get to yoga, to come back to, you know, eat lunch and then have a client session. Like I make sure that that's all blocked off in my calendar. So I had to learn to do that because there was definitely months when I started where I would work for 60 hours a week and forget to eat and forget to <laughs> do, forget to move from my chair. And I was like, why do I feel like shit? Like, why are things not working in my business? And that was why. So I've, I've learned that it has to be a part of my schedule. 
Very cool. So have you always had some kind of a fitness routine even before or after you started your business or is that um, something you added? Yeah, I have. I would say I started yoga has probably like been the consistent yoga and climbing have been consistent before I started my business. Um, and luckily I had developed a, a routine of doing those things before I started. Uh, so I was, I knew that they were important to me, but there was definitely months when I started when I started my business, when I was working like crazy, where I just didn't do those things. Right. And I, I got super unhealthy. I felt like crap. I had no energy. Um, I was in like that burnout phase and I was just starting. So it took a while to bring them back in, but I'm lucky that I, that I had still, or I had cultivated a practice of those things before yeah. I started business. Yeah. And I couldn't do my, I couldn't run my business without them. Like, sure. I don't know. What <laughs> <laughs> I've, well, I've, I've heard that a lot from different women. So I mean, I, like I feel that way, but I'm in fitness, so like hopefully I feel that way. <laughs> like, but, yeah. But it's good, you know. It's, it's uh, I love hearing that from other women who that's not like their main focus. That you know actually does have an impact. Um, you know, because sometimes as entrepreneurs, like you said, especially when you're getting started, you just get so stuck and like, well, you love what you're doing too. I mean, then there's also so many things to do, so it's hard to to see that adding something else in is gonna like really help you and not hurt you. <laughs> Yeah, but especially, um, I mean, especially climbing. So when I, in the winter here, I can only climb in the gym, but in the summers and spring and fall, I'm often traveling for climbing and being outside and being away from my computer. Um, and this could go for anything. This could be like taking a walk around the city. This could be going for a hike, um, depending on where you live, going for a run, just anything that gets me outside and away from like the obsessiveness of social media and online and internet and WordPress just gives you a whole new perspective. Cause like you go out in the world and you're like, Oh yeah, nobody else knows <laughs> like that. I have this business. Nobody else is worried about the size of my mailing list. And it just gives you a perspective that's very real. Cause we tend to get sucked into this whole online thing. That's like not, not real life and not as important as we make it out to be. Yeah. It's a little reality check, right? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess we, you touched on this a little bit too, but anything else you'd want to say about, how having fitness as part of your routine has had a positive impact on your business and your life, especially as you've added it back in and made that time for it. Yeah. Um, I think like creativity wise, it's really easy to get sucked into staring at your computer for so many hours that like you don't even know what you were doing in the first place or what you were <laughs> trying to create and getting away from it all. is just, especially doing yoga or doing for me, climbing like things where I can't let my mind wander. Yoga, mm. sometimes I let my mind wander, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you're not supposed to. But we won't tell your yoga teacher. I know, don't tell my teachers. Um, but with climbing, like, there's nothing else to focus on. Like, you are so in the moment. You have to be so hyper-focused that it's the only time when I completely forget about work. Mm. And that's so important for me because I come back to work and I'm like, oh, yeah, like, I forgot I was creating this thing and I have all these new ideas and I don't feel like I'm sucked down that rabbit hole of, like, energy drain, looking at what everybody else is doing, um, so for me, it's about just getting away from, from business for a little bit. Um, and also, uh, taking care of my body. Cause like physically sitting on a computer for 10 hours a day, which I'm not going to lie, like it's not very uncaged, but I do it all the time. And, you know, and I don't have good posture and I sit hunched over and I try to remember to, you know, sit properly and take breaks, but really like who does that? Right. It's really, <laughs> so so things like getting to yoga class or like doing stretching at home is mm. super important because otherwise I feel it in my body and that affects all of my energy and, and everything that I do. I travel with my yoga mat everywhere that I go. So even if oh, I'm <laughs> for a weekend or like just in Guatemala, um, I had my mat and even when I'm not working a ton, I'll still make it a priority to, to keep up with those practices. Awesome. I yeah. love that. And so, I mean, even though you have it as part of your routine and everything and you bring your yoga mat with you, are there times when you're not 100% on your routine? And can you talk to me a little bit about that? I know we, we're all human. Uh, but yeah. also like, you know, so whether that's true or not, and then also like, what do you do to get yourself back into the routine? You know, if you skipped a day or two, you know, how that, how yeah. that plays out. If, you mean like a week or two? Or a week two? <laughs> you know. Yeah, I forget. You know, there's times where I look at, so what I do is I have, um, I wonder if I can show you, I have on my fridge, um, my yoga like schedule for my yoga class. Mm. Um, so it has all this, all the daily 
classes, but it's like a month long calendar. So I literally write every day. So what I do, so I put a C for climbing, I put a Y for yoga, I put an S for spin class so that I can look at my whole month and go, oh, okay, this is how many times I did that this month. And it's amazing for accountability because yeah. I don't like coming home and putting an X on the day <laughs> if I didn't do anything. Um, but it also helps me see, like before I went um, on this trip, I had, did my retreat in Belize and then went to Guatemala for a week. So I was gone for two weeks. And the week before that, I was gone for a week. And then before that, it was Christmas. And so I had this yeah. huge period of time where my calendar was like pretty empty. <laughs> it was like all X's. Um, so I try not to beat myself up about it because I think that we do this a lot with fitness. We do this a lot with business where we're like, oh, well, I missed two weeks. Like, pff, I might as well just quit. Right. Like we have this all or nothing approach where if we haven't done something, we decide that it's game over and we should just stop now. Uh, and that's not a good attitude to have about fitness or about your business. So, um, yeah, I've learned that if I look at my calendar and there's a bunch of X's, like two weeks in a row where I did nothing, I'm like, all right, <laughs> this week you have to go to yoga. And I, you know, I take every day as a new day instead of um, assuming that because I haven't done anything for a few weeks that that's going to be the pattern for the next few weeks. It doesn't have to be. So it's about constantly making a choice to to commit to it again. Yeah, I love. And I mean, do you ever feel some of the women I've talked to say they, they can like tell that they haven't been? That's when they. Do you ever feel that, or or is it more like that you're like, okay, I should probably get back. On I can track. definitely tell. Like, I get grumpy. <laughs> my body hurts. I'm like, I'm just not feeling good. Um, and I think we all know the fog of sitting on the computer for too long right. and like what makes you feel. So yeah, I mean, it's it's hard here in Toronto. My the climbing gym that I go to is um, it's about a twenty minute bike ride, which is fine. But when it's minus twenty and full of snow, yeah, like it's me an hour to get there on the subway. It's not ideal, and it's so easy to skip it. Um, so in those cases, I do stuff at home. I like yeah. get up, do jumping jacks, I do push ups, I do whatever I can to just get the energy moving because it's not always convenient to be able to leave the house for three hours to go, you know, do a workout or go hike a mountain or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, very true but yeah I can definitely feel it in my body when I'm not keeping up with it yeah no, I, I love sharing that too especially the part about how you can come back to it because I feel like I just I meet a lot of women who don't really have it as part of their routine or didn't when they started their business and maybe thought that they would start their business to have more time to take care of themselves but find the <laughs> opposite's true so it's, it's good to share the fact that you know you can start you can add it in and then if you miss a few days you can always come back to it and you know it'll be okay but you'll actually feel better when you do instead of like more overwhelmed which I think yeah. sometimes we, we think but yeah it's definitely harder if you don't already have it as a practice or as a routine so I actually tell my clients to think of it as like a business meeting like when they schedule it in pretend that it's a client you know this is a client session that you can't miss um, cause I actually think it's, it's not like a luxury in our lives and our businesses. I totally think it needs to be part of our business plan. I Very tell my true. clients that all the time, because if you're not scheduling that time, you're going to overlook it and you're going to start to really feel the effects of it. So yeah, I think it needs to be in the business plan, like for I every entrepreneur. I, <laughs> I agree. I might be biased, but <laughs> <laughs> you're a little biased, but I mean, it, it is. And even if it's not part of your routine normally, um, you can't serve your clients if you're feeling like shit. You can't take care of yourself. You can't, take, you can't do anything good in your business if you are not taking care of yourself. So even if it hasn't been a part of your routine before, it needs to become one. Yeah. I fully believe in that. I love what you're saying too. It doesn't have to be like, they don't have to start by going to spinning and then mountain climbing. They can start with walking and, and even that can have a big impact. I mean, even for myself, I know like just sometimes when I've been sitting, because I even though I'm a personal trainer, I do I have online clients as well. So I'm sitting a lot and getting up and just walking around my apartment even, I feel like, oh, <laughs> I feel a little bit better now. I have more energy. <laughs> yeah, committing to going for a walk every lunchtime or, you know, first thing in the morning before you get on your computer doing a few stretches, like whatever it is that's going to work. Um, yeah. And of course, I say that I've been saying for months now that I need to start like a morning routine where I get up. I do some, I've got like some injuries from climbing. So there's like physio stuff I have to do. So I keep saying I'm going to like have a morning routine and get up. And before I do anything, I'm going to do my stretches. I'm going to do some breathing. And I have I done it? No. <laughs> um, so like, it's not, you know, no one's perfect. And I think that what I've realized is that just doesn't work for me. So I need to fit it in, in ways that do work for me. I love the idea of people who get up and spend two hours doing their thing. It's not really how I work. So yeah. I think it's a lot about finding a way that's going to work for you and not trying to stick to what works for anybody else. Yeah. I love that. Like yeah, having the freedom to st listen to yourself, listen to your body and you know, in the fitness, in the, in your business as well. Like, I think, I think, I mean, I'm sure you find this with your clients too. And with the business clients that you're coaching that unless if they can do things everyone else's way, but until they do it the way that works for them, they're not going to like 
you know, feed themselves and they're they're not going to attract the people they want to have. So yeah, it can be hard to find out what works for you though, too. So I think like playing around with stuff is, is really important because it's easy to be like, well, I've tried going to the gym and it didn't work for me. So I guess I can't, you know, I guess I can't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I think experimenting and playing and, and sometimes, like I said, putting it in your schedule and even if your body's like, no, I'm tired today. I don't want to go like forcing yourself to do it because it takes time to build those habits. Mm. Um, it's kind of like, you know, building your business. Like there's going to be shit you don't want to do. I swore. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, <laughs> I always forget to ask at the beginning of interviews. Um, we'll put a little there's warning. Always- <laughs> a little um, there's always going to be stuff that you don't want to do. And like fitness is one of those things sometimes. Like it's not like... I think there's there's something to be said to like listening to your body and listening to your energy levels. But if you do that and your energy is always low and you're not doing anything to raise your energy, you're going to get into a cycle of not doing anything. So sometimes we have to push past what we feel like our body wants to do and just do it anyways. And I think that's one of the biggest things in terms of setting up a routine is going to the gym, going for a walk, doing some stretching when you don't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, <laughs> that's good advice. And, and my other question was going to be, what advice do you have? And this is kind of what we just talked about, but for women who say, okay, all this stuff sounds good that you guys are talking about, but I'm still like really, really busy and I don't have time. Any other like short words of wisdom there to, to push them into trying? <laughs> um, that it doesn't have to take a really long time. Mm. So like you can take, you can literally take 30 seconds and stand up and do 50 jumping jacks. And then yeah. sit back down. Like sometimes I'll get up and I'll just do like 25 squats and then I'll sit back down just when I'm feeling like I need to, to move. Um, getting a buddy or like a, a fitness partner or something is also really great. Um, yeah. If you have someone in your area who you can drag along with you. I know that the mornings at nine o'clock when I go to spin class, the times I usually go are the times that I can drag my friend with me. <laughs> and if she says no, then I usually don't end up there. So having somebody to drag you is, is really cool. But in terms of no time, like it doesn't have to be a four hour gym session right. or like you don't have to go run a half marathon, right. like little things throughout the day, like 30 seconds, 30 seconds, three times a day, honestly, like could be enough to just yeah. help you get out of, you know, work mode and shake things up a little bit. Yeah. Love it. Awesome. <laughs> I feel the same way. So <laughs> the other thing I've been asking everyone to do that just to keep everything fun is to offer a dare, like something very actionable that the viewers watching can actually do today and start to see some results. Um, and maybe it's even something you've talked about, touched on before, but what would you dare them to, to do? I would, um, I would dare them to, to schedule it in, mm. to actually, despite how busy their week looks, um, and so, and I schedule in for months ahead. <laughs> so oh, like yeah. I got stuff in my schedule for the next six months. Doesn't mean I go to it, but the intention is there and it makes it a lot easier. So my schedule doesn't fill up. So mm. I would dare them to take the next like two weeks or for the rest of, let's say the rest of February to schedule yeah. in the time that they're going to take to go to the gym, to go to yoga, to do whatever the thing is that they decide to do and to put it into their schedule and to stick with it for the month. And then they can make a decision about whether or not that works for them. Love that. Yeah. I mean, because it really is. It comes down to building that routine first and then, you know, hopefully finding something that you like in that routine. But um, once you get it, that's that's kind of what, what it takes, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah. So we've had a lot of inspiration about fitness and wondering too, we're so close to the beginning of the year that a lot of people picked like a word of the year or maybe you have a mantra or a quote that you live by that you could give us a little extra inspiration for uh, closing yeah. out here. My, I think my word, I don't remember if this was my word last year or this year, but I think I'm going to use it for both, um, was, was like life or live. Because I feel like the first two years of my business were really, I mean, I was still, I started my business while I was on a huge road trip climbing. So I can't say it was like, you know, a lot of work. It was a different kind of work. But I spent a lot of time forgetting about why I created the business in the first place. Mm. So to me, it was really important last year and this year to create a lot of time to be outside, to be away from work. Um, and to use that to fuel the business. So yeah, more play, more time outside, um, less working. Yeah. <laughs> really. Yeah. Well, that's kind of when you have your own business, you want that at least, I think some, most of us do want that, even though we do work a lot, but as an end goal where you had that, that more of a balance than you would have in an office. So yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah. I, I didn't get to ask this yet, but how did you get into mountain climbing? Have you been doing it 
like forever, forever. Um, so I do rock climbing. So I don't climb oh, mountains. Ro- okay. I climb rocks, which is a different thing. <laughs> <laughs> just because, yeah. Uh, yeah. I started it when I lived um, in Vancouver years ago. And then just with some friends, we'd go like once a month to climbing gym and then stopped. And then when I moved to Toronto, um, I was actually dating a guy. And he's like, we should go rock climbing. And I was like, yeah, I, I like rock climbing. <laughs> stopped dating him but kept climbing and now it's just such a consistent part of my life that it's you know I don't know I don't really remember what I used to do without it yeah (laughs) um and it's been so important for business too because it's the it's literally the only thing that takes me away from all of the things that are in my head to do with work it's the only time when I can focus completely on something else Uh, and it lets me travel to amazing random weird places that I would never go and yeah cool no, I was always like, I wonder how you got started with that. Cause it's yeah. <laughs> Anyone who's amazing. like, who's like, doesn't like the gym, but wants something active to do um, and wants to meet new people. Climbing is awesome. It's such a great community, no matter where you live. If you have, unless you live in a super small town and that has no climbing, but usually <laughs> I'm in gym somewhere close to you if you live in a big city and it's a great workout. It's super fun. Um, it relates so much to, there's so much shit that comes up climbing that like relates to business. Oh, I bet. Like not being good enough, not being strong enough. I'm scared. I can't do it. Like everything. It's, it's very parallel to business. So, um, that's a great, it's a great fitness activity. If someone's trying to find something new to, to do something yeah. more fun than just like going to the gym and slugging away. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Awesome. Well, Rebecca, I've loved talking with you today. Um, we'd love to have you share where people can find you so that they can learn more about you and, and how you might be able to help them because I have a lot of female entrepreneurs um, watching the series, so you'd be a good fit. <laughs> yeah, um, well, I'm, I'm at theuncagedlife.com. Um, and if they go to the community page, the uncagedlife.com slash community, um, if there's anyone who's looking for just accountability partners for business, for fitness, whatever it is. I've got my, well, as you know, I've got my Facebook group that's got literally thousands of people in it now. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, (laughs) Yeah, and it's a great place to just collaborate with other people and meet other business owners for anyone who feels like they're kind of stuck and they're doing it alone and feels like they're the only one who has these problems. You're not. (laughs) Um, You can go talk to thousands of other people in my group who have the same problems. And yeah, so it's a great place to come and hang out and chat with me and chat with everyone else in the group. Awesome. And do you have any retreats coming up or anything? Or you, you just finished out, so now you're... Just finished the Catalyze Retreat, which is in Belize. Um, just got back from it, and it's amazing. So we're doing it again next January. Yeah, Very so cool. Catalyze Retreat is open for business. Uh, it's still a year away, but, you know, some people like to plan ahead. So yeah, I mean, well, now that they're getting their fitness routine down and they're plan- into the planning, hopefully they can get a little yeah. extra planning. Well, it's very fitness oriented. So we do yoga every morning, um, cool. followed by business building workshops. And then we go for a hike or do like other jungle adventures, caving, um, river tubing in the afternoons. And then we do more business after that. So it's got a really good fitness component to it, which is which was important for us because we, we know what it's like to be stuck behind our computers. So yeah. it was important for us to create a week where we're actually making people get outside and yeah. having to see the effect that that can have on their business and their creativity very cool awesome and I, I have to tell anyone watching I Rebecca we talked about this before but I really love Rebecca's community it's one of the first I haven't been in there much lately because I've just been so busy but one of the first places I've found online where I was like oh I'm not alone I can really have an online business and and definitely had a lot of people help me out with just random questions that would come up and and I would yeah. not be where I am today without the Uncaged Life. So definitely oh, go, that's amazing. go check her out. <laughs> well, yeah, I think what you're doing is such a perfect example of, um, you know, a lot of people in the fitness industry don't think they can work online. And there's yeah. just so much possibility. So I love hearing you say that. Oh, yeah. No, I, I definitely, and, and people, even like I hear people in fitness say, what do you, like, especially when I started, what are you going to do that for? That's not going to work. But so definitely, I'm sure you hear that with all the different types of businesses too. But um, no, it can work. And, and that's why you know you want to find a, a good group that can support you and tell you, no, you can have that crazy idea. It's not that crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's not that crazy. Totally. <laughs> but very cool. Well, it's been so great, like I said, having you. Um, I'll leave all your links and everything so people can go, go check you out as well. And um, don't forget that Rebecca's dared you to go and try to schedule out your fitness for the rest of the month. Maybe try some different things so you don't have to go to the gym if you don't want to. Um, Just schedule some movement in at least and see how it makes you feel. Report back. Show us some proof of you actually accepting (laughs) the dare. I want hashtag Instagram photos. (laughs) Yes, we want want some proof. Um, And yeah, we'll we'll conclude today's segment of the Fitting and Fitness interview series and hopefully you'll go back and check out some of the other interviews and, and get inspired to get or keep moving in 2015. And we'll see you next time. (laughs) See you, Becca. Bye. Thank you.